got a great show for you this week. We've got two guests here, Kathy Judson and Marilyn Beckett from Friends of the Palouse Ranger District. We're talking about um, the land exchange. Everyone loves to hate. That's a Loxall land exchange. So let's see how let's see how these levels are doing there. How are you doing there, you We're two? Good. Doing good. Okay, if you might want to get a little closer there, Kathy. All right, let's see. How are you doing, Marilyn? How's that sound? I uh, get a little closer to you, too, Marilyn. How about now? Okay, that, that that's okay. That that will be okay, but you might want to just I'll get move, a touch I'll closer. I'll move my briefcase. I'm, I, I'm, I'm one that just, just gets right up on that mic, as you can see. Okay. So. okay. Uh, anyway, I wanted to talk to you, though. Ask a few questions. You know, uh, today an interesting meeting. League of Women Voters asked a bunch of questions about it. Um, um, they had some discussions, but the big news, and, and there's uh, there's two pieces of really big news right now. And number one is the Forest Service has come out finally um, with their draft environmental impact statement, and they have a bunch of alternatives in there and. There is a 90-day public comment period that ends February 23rd of next year. So that's one. But I want you, that's the big news, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. But, and some of the problems with the actual public involvement process here. But first, I would like you two to tell me what Friends of the Palouse Ranger District is doing. You've got, I see some really pretty signs and brochures. Can you tell us what's going on? We're trying to make the public more aware of the Upper Locksaw Land Exchange and because the Forest Service, we feel, has failed to get the public involvement in this issue. And so we've created signs that we'd love to hang up all over everywhere for people to find out about, and that's what we're working on now. And then we also created a brochure that tells all about the land exchange or as much as we could in a brochure size. So. Anything to add to that, Marilyn? Uh, just that we need to be able to distribute these things far and wide. We don't really uh, have any access to uh, the uh, parcels that are being exchanged up in the area of, of Blanchard and Mullen. Right now, we'd like to get some brochures and uh, signs in that uh, region down by Riggins, parcel down there. Um, just... All of the areas that are involved in the exchange, we'd like to be able to distribute these and and uh, raise public awareness as to uh, what the Forest Service is trying to push through with this exchange. Uh, of course, that's always important, getting the, the public involved, and that's been, I guess, the goal of this campaign that you've got going on. Um, as people that listen to this radio show know, we've talked a lot about it on this show, uh, there is a lot of opposition to an exchange, especially as it has been proposed. Um, and this draft environmental impact statement doesn't make a lot of changes. They've dropped a few places, uh, a couple places here on the Palouse. I know they did drop around the Potlatch River. Um, of course, that was sort of embarrassing to the Forest Service because they just acquired that parcel right. and through an exchange, and then they were going to trade it away. It just made them look like... Uh, uh, a bunch of fools, which, uh, uh, unfortunately, if one reads this environmental impact statement, I'm not sure they've uh, dispelled people of that myth. But uh, could, there are some problems here, though. We've got a lot of people are very interested in this, and, and I know I got a CD in the mail. I was expecting one of the a document to read. You know, I mean, reading on computers is a little bit tough. But I thought they would at least be mailing out the documents. Did any of you experience the same thing? Yes. Um, most of the people I've talked to all got the CDs. And they are. They're very, very difficult to use. A lot of people don't have access to a computer, so the CD's done them no good. And most of the people that we know, everybody requested hard copies, including ourselves of which we had to request multiple times before we actually got them. <laughs> and we have, both Marilyn and I have emailed down to the Forest Service and asked when people could expect to get their hard copies. And I understand today from talking with Teresa Turlock that the public needs to call there individually and ask for a hard copy. So all the people that have asked prior to this um, most of them did not receive a hard copy as they requested. That, that is interesting because I also requested a hard copy, and, didn't, um, and I work for an environmental group here in town, Friends of the Clearwater, and w the P.O. box for Friends of the Clearwater, we had a little CD in it. So uh, that's 
that sort of puts a damper on, on public involvement. Some people like CDs, and that's fine. And I don't mind having a CD because if I need to cut and paste and uh, directly quote from their document back to them in the comments, I will do so. But, uh, you know, we still live in a kind of a material world here, and uh, every, everything hasn't been captured by cyberspace. It seems like uh, a hard copy is important for uh, at least some people, especially people who don't have computers. Well, in addition to, I mean, if you have the, if you do have a computer and you have a printer and you can print out the document yourself, <clears throat> then, you know, uh, the, I, I suppose that's a possibility. But, I mean, the Forest Service can't count on that. And people, in this particular instance, they need to be able to look at this document. They need to be able to have their red pen handy and start making marks and understand that that is the only way they're going to be able to stop this thing. The vast majority of the time, these land exchanges, uh, once the recommendation has been made by the forest supervisor, that's what happens. And I don't think a lot of people realize the finality that's already attached to this draft of the environmental impact statement with which we have only 90 days to make a stand, to take a stand to try and stop this thing. This recommendation is, is uh, you know, basically the writing on the wall. Well, actually, the writing on the wall came before the recommendation. It's just that we've been told that we needed to wait for the draft. <clears throat> the writing on the wall came with the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding with the Forest Service and, the, and Western Pacific Timber and the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation saying that um, they would affect this land exchange before the public ever knew. I think you've, you've hit on something very important there. Maryland, the uh, National Environmental Policy Act is explicit, stating that there has to be an analysis of impacts through an environmental impact statement before, and that's the key word, decisions are made. In this case, it certainly appears, and the record uh, shows that a decision to do an exchange was made before an analysis was done. Uh, the analysis is just out now, and, in fact, the decision is not supposed to be made until they're final. Uh, that's the process, and it certainly appears the public has been given the short shrift here. Uh, you know, that's a, actually makes a good segue. I know we don't have a whole lot of time because you uh, do have both of you have another appointment. Uh, I believe you're going to uh, meet with the uh, um, um, the Daily News. But uh, two issues here: one is, is the public interest, and how is the public interest going to be served? I, I, I think probably most people or almost nobody disagrees that the Upper Locks ought to come into public ownership. But it carries with it a lot of liabilities in terms of uh, what's up there. And, and, you know, what's being traded away is also valuable. So I, I wonder if you had a comment on sort of the, the whole public interest aspect of the, this process. To me, it looks like the public is being completely left out of this and their interests are not being taken into concern at all. And like today... They made very little uh, reference to no action. And where we stand, we would like to see it as a no action. We're not opposed to getting the upper lock saw, but not at the cost of losing our premium lands that everybody utilizes, including the wildlife. And Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, why they're supporting this, I don't know because this is premium elk ground, and you would think that they would be backing saving this land. Yeah, that, that's an interesting point. So the public interest, they're not giving much attention to the um, no-action alternative, nor are they giving much attention to kind of the purchase alternative. Of course, they're, um, they don't even know how much it would cost to purchase this because the appraisal hasn't been done. Yet the public's supposed to comment. Exactly. Yeah, the um, <clears throat> MOU for this deal was signed in uh, spring of 2008. The public didn't learn anything about it until 2009, essentially. And um, at that point in time, <clears throat> which is what we are passing around on our brochures and on the signs that we're in this campaign that we're doing, um, the public said to the that time uh, Clearwater Forest Supervisor, um, Riley, Tom Riley, that, uh, you know, not one acre. We do not want one acre exchanged in this deal. 
And uh, he pretty much told everybody at that time, there were 120 plus people in the room here in Moscow uh, that came to hear about this uh, proposal. And uh, he pretty much said, you know, well, no action is just not an option. Of course, it is required by NEPA to be assessed as an option, but, uh, you know, it, it was already pretty much decided. Um, not likely a purchase, he said, at that point in time. Uh, they didn't really even seem interested in working on it. And, of course, Western Pacific Timber, the reason that they bought the land from Plum Creek in the first place was to exchange it with the Forest Service because what they would get through the exchange was going to be much more valuable. I think that was one of the um, big issues uh, showing how this is being driven by a private uh, interest, a private commercial interest, rather than by uh, the public interest or, the, or even the Forest Service. It came um, out of uh, something uh, Western Pacific wanted to do. Well, it's getting here pretty late. I know you have to go, but could you tell people how... If, if they want more information, how can they get a hold of you, get a hold of uh, some of these signs if they'd like to put them up and the brochures? How's the best way for them to do that? The best way would be to go to our website, and that is LoxaLandExchange.com. Okay. And they can email us from there, and we will get them signs, brochures, whatever they would like, and more information. We're trying to add more information as we can to the website. So there is quite a bit on there now. We'll just continue to keep adding, so keep checking the website. Okay. We're willing to help help people however we can to get the information that they need. We're also recommending, you know, if you already know something about this and are prepared to comment to the Forest Service, please do it before the uh, 23rd of February. And also uh, encourage you to write to the newspapers uh, contact your local radio stations, whatever you can to get the word out there and let the Forest Service know where you stand on this exchange. Okay, so that's at locksonlandexchange.com. Yes. And that's how they can find out more information. Um, people out there, I would encourage everybody to do that. Come involved in this process. Uh, it's very important. Um, and it's... The Friends of the Palouse Ranger District have uh, been working with many, many other people uh, and other organizations in opposition to this, and they've built an impressive a coalition, um, a very wide and broad-based coalition, I might add, against uh, this land exchange, all the way from uh, conservation and environmental organizations to um, agricultural groups like the Farm Bureau. So uh, it's very impressive. Go to that website, uh, get some signs, um, Put them up, hand out some brochures, and above all, uh, stay tuned um, because this show we will announce when uh, the public meetings will be held and where here in Moscow and try to get that word out to people um, as well. So I want to thank you um, both for being here, thank uh, Marilyn you, Gary. Thank you, and Gary, Kathy. For your time. From uh, Friends of the Palouse Ranger District, uh, the environmental impact statement is now out. And in a lot of respects, it's a doozy. I've, I read through the whole thing, and uh, you know, I, I really do want a hard copy, and maybe I could print one off, but sometimes, at least in the past, the Forest Service hard copies have been different than their CDs because they put the way they put the maps and where they're placed and that sort of thing. And so uh, I wanted a, you know, the official kind of hard copy. I don't know if that's the case now. Maybe they're all, all, uh, all look the same, but it, it's really a... It's a problem, and I think the Forest Service made a lot of errors in their analysis, and they're not looking at, and they're not, first of all, taking account of public interest, but they're not looking at all the you know, the impacts from an exchange like this and uh, other options, like you say, um, getting the upper locks off through some other way, not an exchange, is, 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 is a better option. Thanks a lot, Gary. Thanks for, for uh, the time. Uh, and the help in getting the word out there. And also, thanks for this great recognition from Friends of the Clearwater. Okay, you are, you are very welcome. Uh, I think.